turn my headlight on. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the first uh, Milky Way episode of the year. Finally, it's been a while. So we're going to do some phone stuff tonight. And I did already with the S23 Ultra, I did astrophotography a few months ago. But since then, the Milky Way has started rising and it's beautiful, finally. So we're going to get out here and I'm going to test out for the first time Milky Way. And I'm excited about this because, for one, I love the Milky Way. But for two, um, I really want to see the difference between, since they, they rolled out the Astro mode uh, last year, last October, right after the Milky Way set, so I wasn't able to test it with the S22 Ultra. And then, of course, since then, the S23 has come out, and I've done a lot of the Astro with the new Expert Raw Astro mode, but I haven't been able to do Milky Way yet. And I want to see if there's a big difference there, because there's a lot going on in the Milky Way with you know, the galactic core and the nebulae and all of that stuff. And it's just, it, it's different, you know? So let's get this set up. Um, I'm rolling with my Peak Design case here. Uh, this not sponsored or anything. I just love this system and my Peak Design, um, the tripod setup thingy, different tripod, but the they have their, the, the link's in the description for all of that stuff, <laughs> if you care about that sort of thing. Uh, so we're just going to roll right in here and I'm going to get this screen recording rolling. All right. So I found a nice composition here and I'm just, the thing that I was saying before I distracted myself is I'm excited about testing two things. So first just straight up Milky Way in the pro mode, which is what we're going to look at here. I'm going to take a single shot in pro mode and then I'm going to go into expert raw mode and I'm going to test out the astro mode and see uh, how that does with the Milky Way. So first thing we're going to come over here to pro mode uh, and I'm not going to do a deep dive in here about the inner workings of pro modes and all that. I just did a whole video on that for the if you want to learn all of the settings and ins and outs of pro mode you can check that out. But I am going to show you how I'm how I've got everything set up. So the first thing I've noticed is that the focus it does pretty well on multi surprisingly. And for the most part, I don't have to fiddle with the manual. It does a pretty good job with the multi. So I'm going to leave it in that. So the next thing is I want a cooler white balance. I'm going to drop it down to the low 40, you know, 44, 43, 4200, something like that. I like my night skies to look a little bit on the cooler side and some phones and cameras tend to make them a little warmer than I want. And of course you can fix that in post, but no need when you can do it right here in camera. So my speed, my shutter speed, I'm going to go all the way out to 30 and get as much light as possible because it's really dark. The moon is just set. I'm in Southwest New Mexico where there is like no light. There's some light pollution on the horizon, but there's, it's really dark out here. So I need all the light I can get. This can go up to 3200, but I advise against that. I've talked about this before and I've shown examples and stuff. It's just no bueno for 3200. I really like to stick around 800. So we're going to do a shot at 800 and then we'll do one at 1600 because I still think 800 is going to be a little dark. Uh, so let's grab those 800 ISO 30 second shutter uh, and then we're going to have camera lady hit the lights. Okay, so that was shot number one. So I'm digging the composition. We got the Milky Way right over these yuccas. Uh, didn't get the yucca lit up exactly as I might have wanted, but we'll, we'll play around with that. That's okay. You notice it's looking dark around the edges there, and the Milky Way is looking a little dark. So let, we're going to kick it up to 1600 and see if that helps. You just got to be real careful because the noise on these tiny little sensors uh, is going to hurt, you know? All right. Hold on, camera lady, and kill the light. All right, so this is looking pretty good. So this is the 1600 ISO. If we zoom in here, though, we see two things. Uh, we see that the yuccas are more in focus than the Milky Way, so we can fix that. And then we see that there is a lot of color noise. Check that out. You see that little blob in the, in the bottom left uh, or center left? That is the Lagoon Nebula. I've shot that before with my bigger cameras and telescopes. And it's really cool that the phone is picking it up. So if we zoom out a little bit, right here in the center, you'll see the Dark Horse. So that's pretty cool. We've got the Galactic Core in there. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to go right 
on the other side of the yuccas because I'm going to come in here and we're going to go over to more and then we're going to go up to expert raw. It's nice that they're including it in the in the phone now and in the regular camera app. You don't have to go to download from the Samsung store anymore. So in the raw, I'm in the expert raw, I'm going to come in here and you can see that my astro mode is turned on so i just turn it off i'm going to turn it back on so you can see we have the four seven or ten minutes uh i've messed with this a lot and i haven't really noticed the difference between the four seven and ten minutes and i really have found that the four minutes has been optimum and the ten minutes just kind of wastes my time uh, I just, if you guys have seen any noticeable differences between them, let me know in the comments, but I haven't. So I'm going to leave it on the four minute. You can turn the sky guide on or off. Um, I don't really need it. Uh, but we're just going to close that. So we have it set for the four minutes. And then as soon as I get away, I found that the astro mode, it works better with just mostly sky. Like try not to have things like this, like the yucca uh, in your shot because it, it might wonk out a little bit. So, you know, try to get clear skies and, and not much going on in the foreground if you're doing the astro mode, because I really think it's it's uh, really meant for just the stars and as little foreground as possible. So I'll just do this one shot here uh, on the wide and see how it handles that, that yucca right there. And then we'll wrap it up here and then I'm going to take this stuff back to the studio and I'll see you in there and we can edit some of these photos and see how they're looking. I want to see the difference between the Astro mode and the regular single shot pro modes. So, so we'll see you inside in just a minute. All right, so let's just jump right into it. I haven't even looked at any of these yet, and I figure that uh, we should just look at them together and I'll edit a couple of them. So here's the first one that I took uh, before we started doing the video, and that's just uh, to get kind of a ballpark reference. Oh, this is interesting. This is one of the four minute ones. So you can see here that it changed uh, 19 seconds, it says. And I don't, we don't have a 19 second option on there. So that means that it chose that and then it must have blended a bunch of 19 second ones together. Just like on the S22 and every time I've used the, on both S22 and the S23 Ultra, uh, I'm getting really green images, especially in the JPEGs from, and even in the DNGs. But that's from the Astro mode in the Expert Raw. And I think that's really weird because like, Here's a four minute close up with the, the three times telephoto on the galactic core there. And there's, we can see a couple of nebulae and the dark horse and stuff. Um, also, so this one is, was a four minute one also when it did 15 seconds and you can see it did ISO 1600. So I don't, and it, I have no idea how many of this stacked, uh, but we're, we're going to try to edit this DNG. Interestingly, here's the 10 minute one I did and it did 15 seconds at 1600 ISO. And what's interesting about it is that it looks a lot more underexposed than the four minute one. So I'm going to edit the four minute one. I've just never been happy with the 10 minute uh, options when I've messed around with this. And then here is another four minute one I did with something in the foreground just to kind of see how it did with dealing with the foreground and the stars in the background. We got some clouds there, but um, we'll see what we can do with that one in a minute. So I'm really curious. I just want to try this deep space one and clean this up. I just really want to see uh, if we can clean this up. That's looking pretty bad on here, actually. So that's just not... I don't know what happened, but look, it's just not... Adobe is just not handling this DNG well. And I think that's really weird. Like, even if I were to use one of my presets, it's still not doing much. 
Okay, so I used the preset first and then now sliding, and now it's not crushing that as much, and I think that's really weird. So, Camera Raw just maybe doesn't like these DNGs as much. I don't know. But the first thing we gotta fix is that, that color temperature, huh? I think what's the biggest bummer out of this whole thing for editing is that the the new noise reduction in Adobe is amazing. And I've done some videos about it. I know this is a phone channel, uh, but editing is editing no matter what you're using, whether it's a phone or a mirrorless or DSLR or whatever. And this option right here is amazing. So this is how we used to have to do it. And that's doing really weird things. And it's really unfortunate that Adobe's new AI noise isn't able to handle the DNG from this phone. I mean, you see that? Like, look at the... That is just insane as to why it's something... I've never had this, un, this much unhappiness from a phone image before in terms of Adobe being able to handle it. So something weird is going on with that... with this these files. All right, so that's a little bit better cleaning it up, but I mean, we still got, we still got some wonky colors and some wonky details going on in here. Uh, that's just, that's not looking good. I mean, yeah, that, that didn't really do anything. I mean, at this point, we're just pushing it so hard that nothing is making it look good. So I would maybe even just leave it here and then I would probably just crop in and a little bit and get some of that yucky bit out. But the more you crop in too, the more that's gonna hurt. So you can see we got the Laguna and the Trifid Nebula, and then we just cropped out the Eagle Nebula a little bit. Oh no, right there, I think. Um, we cropped out a little bit of Dark Horse. So I will say though, just, just keeping in mind, comparatively speaking, like, I don't, you couldn't have done this with a phone a couple of years ago, um, especially not without a tracker. You know, you would have, you would have had to put the phone on a tracker manually expose, but even then, you just wouldn't have get, you wouldn't have been able to get the long exposures that you need, even with a tracker uh, and stacking. Uh, it would have been very difficult. So the fact that you can do even this at all, just like right in the camera, uh, it, it's a big improvement. But let's just take a look at, at some like. Uh, better phone stuff here because right now I think I'm kind of making the phone look bad by comparison This is a similar focal length and I took this last night while I was shooting uh, This is with a, an R6 a Canon R6 full frame and that's 70 images stacked at uh, 70 millimeters so 76 images stacked That's a lot more detail and that's way better looking so it's really not a, a fair comparison at all because of the sensor, the glass, and everything else. But let's just look at something the phone can do relatively well. All right, so enough of these expert RAWs. I just don't even want to bother. I just want to look at the regular pro mode. This is where I am much happier with the phone. So let's just take a look at this first shot here. Oh, here we go. All right, so here's single shot from the DNG, 30 seconds with the, the regular uh, wide, not the ultra wide, just the regular wide. You can see uh, ISO 1600 and 30 seconds. This is the one I just, I lit those cacti, the cactus a little bit with the, with the headlight. But this already is looking way better. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of tweaking here. So there's a little before and after just in camera raw. Let's see if we can't clean this up. I'm just, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do a square crop on this just to chop out that unnecessary stuff above and below. 
It's a lot of distracting negative space in there. So we will note that the Milky Way here, it looks like is not quite as sharp. Uh, and that's because letting it do the autofocus, picking the spot. So doing a focus stack probably would have been better. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more. I'm going to see how Neo does with the noise reduction since I didn't do any noise reduction in Adobe because uh, I didn't want to do global. So I'm going to come in here to their noiseless AI and I'm, it's recommending middle. So I guess I'll go ahead and see. You can see too, when we zoom in, we've got a little bit of blurriness there. That's that's star, star trails. That's the star trails. And that's because uh, I used a 30 second and the 30 seconds with the focal length here was just a hair too long. Um, but only when you zoom in, you know, if you don't zoom in, then it looks fine, I think. All right, so we got that going. Let's just do a little bit more. All right, so that's enough for the global edits. There's what we're looking at so far. Now we're gonna go in here and do some selective editing. So I'm gonna do some dodge and burning and just kind of bring up the areas that I really want to hit. So I'm just going to brighten some of these highlights a little bit. And then I'm going to darken some of the dark bits. All right, so all I'm doing is just darkening up those bits that should have been darker. Uh, and that's and then brightening up a little bit of that galactic core area there. So that just helps make it pop and works with the detail that we have already in there just a little bit more. And I don't want to do anything too hardcore. I do want to take this light out though. Oh, that was from my other, that's my other camera. Wow. All right, well, I don't think it has to be perfect. I think that's pretty good. Just take that, my other camera out there. So I really don't want to do too much more than this to this image because again, with the phone images, with their tiny little sensors, you really just got to keep in mind that the harder you push, the more the image is going to break down or the faster the image is going to break down. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And I think I'm just going to say that's the best I can do with some medium effort. I'm, I mean, I will say I'm pretty happy with that. Just knowing that it just came out of a phone and then I did just minimal work to this and it's a single shot, not stacked, not tracked with just a little tiny bit of editing. Uh, I, I think I'm pretty happy knowing that you have something in your pocket that can capture this at any time. Let's just take a look at one of these uh, horizontal wider landscape shots. I like the mountain in the background, but I don't like the uh, don't like pollution. And I think for that one, I'm going to keep it as a wide 16 by nine. I, I think that looks really nice. Uh, everything's got going on. All right. So that was it. I think that's all the images that I'm going to edit out of this batch. Um, I will say that I'm definitely relatively happy knowing again, all the constraints of the phone and everything. Um, I'm happy with what I got and with what the, the phone can do. I don't really think that it's too much better than the S22 uh, Ultra. And I've done videos on that too. You can go check those out if you want to see the same style, but with the S22 and, and what I got. 
I think they're very similar. Uh, I think the S23 maybe just a hair marginally have a couple of better features or whatever, but, but the S22 Ultra has the Astro mode now and the Pro mode is very similar. So I definitely don't think it's worth like updating or upgrading just for the camera or especially not just for the Astro stuff. Uh, if, if that's what you're into, I think you're gonna be happy with either one of them. There's still a couple of things with the Astro and some Astro time lapses and star trails and stuff that I wanna do with the S23 Ultra. So I'm gonna try to get, get out and get those done sometime this summer now that we finally have the Milky Way and stars and everything uh, starting to line up. So the stars are aligning. <laughs> If you have any comments or questions about uh, anything that I did or didn't do concerning the S23 Ultra and the Milky Way, leave those in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. So without trying to beat this horse to death, I think I'm going to call it good here and wrap it up. So uh, comments down below, hit that like button for me if you're still here. I super appreciate it. It's the best thing you do for the channel. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed already, you should definitely subscribe because I've got more stuff coming up pretty soon and I will hopefully see you out there in the next one. Thanks for watching.